All right, how are you guys doing? Good, I hope. All right, today we're doing um, some calculus. We're looking at series and we're checking out the integral test, which basically helps you figure out, um, sometimes it helps you figure out if a series converges or diverges, which is all we need to be happy many, many times. All right, so consider this. Suppose you have a, a um, series such as this one, if you start adding it up as n goes from 1 and it goes all the way to infinity, you see when you plug in 1, you get 1 over 1. Then you get 1 over 2, etc., etc. Suppose now you were to make a picture of this um, sum. Uh, the picture may look something like this. one. This whole number is equal to 1. You could maybe represent that with a block uh, that is uh, 1 by 1 area. So this would be 1. This one you could represent with half a block. So you could take half the block, and you could say, well, that means a half. The total amount of area there is a half. This one, of course, would be a third, and so you could represent it with a third of a block. And this would be one-third, and so on and so forth. So the total sum could be represented by this area. The area of these blocks and portions of blocks is exactly, exactly the same as that number, whatever number that may be, if it's in fact a number. Uh, this is a good insight because, consider this now, suppose you go on and you look at the function, the continuous function version of this sequence. This sequence just hits the integers, whole numbers, and is equal to 1, 2, 3, whatever. What if you hit all the numbers in between? This may look something like uh, this, of course. Uh, that, that's what it would look like. And that one, if you were to make a picture of exactly what we're adding, it would look something like this. You would make a uh, function. Um, and this function is 1 over x. y is equal to 1 over x. And you're starting off at 1. And you're adding all this area all the way towards infinity, as x goes towards infinity. Okay. Now, um, the question is, well, let's clean this up. The question becomes, what is the relation between that area and that area? Well, the height at 1 is the same, and the height at 2, at, at, at the whole numbers, the height matches. At 3, it's 1 third, etc., etc. But in between, but the, this one is very, very smooth going down. This one is cornery, very, very cornery. And the question is, which one would have more area? Or um, the error that if we were to overlap them, may they may overlap something like this. Let's do a little overlapping here with red. If you were to overlap them, the overlap may look something like this. And so you get all this error here. Uh, this is error, error, error. This is called the cornery error, the error coming from the corners. And the question is whether or not that error, those corners, are significant enough to affect convergence or divergence. Meaning that if this area is finite, this one's roughly the same except for the corners, can I still say that this one's finite? And also if this area is infinite, can I still say that this area is infinite? Or should I be concerned about the corners? The corners may throw off because if the corners amount to an infinite amount of area, then who knows, all bets are off. But if the corners are a finite amount, um, even though you have infinite many of them, they get smaller and smaller. If the area in the corners amounts to something finite, then they both behave the same. They're in the same boat. Either they both converge or both diverge. So what this boils down to is whether or not the corners matter. Do these corners that supply this error here um, affect convergence or divergence? And the truth is, uh, Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes the corners matter, and sometimes they don't. All that error is really, really finite and insignificant in the big picture. So what we want to get out to do, we want to say, what we want to set out to do is to figure out when do the corners matter. And then we're going to use some nice stuff. You'll see. So, uh, so, the, so the moral story here is sometimes the corners matter, and sometimes they don't. Okay? Now, um, if the corners don't matter, 
then they both converge and both diverge. Let's just summarize that. Uh, but sometimes the corners do matter. For example, suppose you had a function kind of like this one, uh, some generic function, right? Here's what could possibly happen. You could have a function that that does something a little bit more crazy, not like the other one, but maybe the function goes something like this. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down, and maybe it goes a little while here. I don't know, whatever it may do. When you try to take that function and you try to replicate it, but you're only hitting it at the integer locations here, um, say at 1, you you check the height and you take that block. Say at 2, you check the height and you take that block. At 3, you take check the height and you take that block. This is different than the other one because, because if you were trying to approximate this area uh, using the blocks, you have so much error. Look at the error here. The error is big, 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 and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. So sometimes the corners do matter. When you have some weird function, this corner may add up infinite amount of area, in which case convergence or divergence of the integral may not be a good indicator of the convergence or divergence of the series. Clear? So sometimes the corners could, could matter a lot. And this just gives you uh, some intuition into when that might be. Um, so if the corners do matter, just to summarize this, uh, the behavior of the integral is not a good indicator of the behavior of the series. So in that case, all bets are off. We cannot use the integral test. But, but when they do, when they don't matter, here, here's the punchline. Um, if the function, if your function is decreasing, whoops, and your function is positive, if those two things happen, your function is always decreasing, meaning going downhill, not this zigzag stuff here, but if it's always going downhill and it's always positive, then ipikaye, winner, winner, chicken dinner, they both behave the same way. The corners don't matter in that case. So basically, we just have to check these two conditions. If you can go on and check that the corners don't matter, that, that is decreasing, and you can check that they're all positive, you're done. You can comfortably say that whatever the integral does, it, the series will do exactly the same thing. And those little corners, they don't matter. Uh, when that happens, those little corners will not matter at all. Okay? So, um, let's take a look at an example. That's the major picture. That's the main idea. Let's see if we can actually apply it in action to an example. Alright, come back and we'll do that example when you come back. Thanks.